Colombia's government has put it clear it is determined to set their energy locomotive, as they labeled their ambitious energy plans, full steam ahead. Luckily, their engine seems to be well-tuned. Colombia is attractive. You have lots of investment, lots of companies coming, lots of interest in new areas, and production levels practically doubling, Javier Gutierrez, the head of the country's state-controlled energy company, Ecopatrol, told the Financial Times. After years of decline in production and exploration during the 1990s, in the past decade, Colombia has taken advantage of the commodities boom and a crackdown that has put Marxist insurgents on the back foot. This had ignited the interest of investors in the energy-rich parts of the country that were off-limits during the rough years of the drug-fueled, guerrilla and paramilitary violence in what became the Western Hemisphere's longest-running armed conflict. Overcoming fears of becoming an importer, the Andean country has almost doubled its production since 2006 to over 955,000 barrels of oil equivalent a day in October 2012. Even India's SR Oil has agreed earlier this year to buy 12 meters barrels from Eka Patrol over a year. The oil and mining boom that has transformed Colombia into the region's fourth-largest oil producer and the world's fourth-largest exporter of coal in recent years has made it one of Latin America's sweetest spots for energy investments. Colombia has current proven reserves of 2.3 BN barrels in perspective of between 7.7 .7 BN and 41 BN barrels, according to the Energy Ministry. With booming production, good prospects and a favorable policy framework, Colombian officials expect around $17 billion in foreign investment this year, about half of that going into energy projects. Investments in hydrocarbons in the past eight years has been sustained, at between $3.5 billion and $5 billion a year. Ten years ago, it was only around $250 million. The number of agents and companies participating in the sector are now more than 100. The number of auctioned hectares jumped from 10 meters to 100 meters. Mr. Gutierrez says, being surrounded by left-leaning neighbors with a penchant for resource nationalism, such as Hugo Chavez's Venezuela and Rafael Correa's Ecuador, also played a role in diverting investments towards Colombia. Yet, aside from this and the cooling of the internal armed conflict, the boost was in big part fueled by the liberalization of the industry in the mid-2000s, which includes the creation of the National Agency for Hydrocarbons, or AN, and the partial opening of Ecopatrol. Since then, the state-controlled oil giant has managed to restructure its contracts and encourage the private sector to invest. By being fully in the hands of the state, Ecopatrol used to be judge, jury, and executioner. And that made some investors uncomfortable, explains Isaac Yanovich, who sat on the company's board and was the mastermind behind the opening. With Mr. Gutierrez at the helm, Eka Patrol has increased production 16% a year since 2008 and is now among the best performing energy groups in Latin America, trailing trailing just behind Brazil's Petrobras, Venezuela's PDVSA, and Mexico's Pemex. Today, Ecopatrol contributes to more than 60% of Colombia's oil production, with its oil production almost doubling from 400,000 baud in 2007 to about 780,000 baud this year. It plans to increase that to 1.3 clean baud by 2020, boosted by an $80 billion investment program. The company's market value has risen more than fourfold since its initial public offering in Colombia 2007 and a year later in New York, a week after the collapse of Lehman Brothers. What Javier Gutierrez and his people have done in these past six years is mighty work, says Mr. Yanovich. Testimony of the success was the surprising shock when in May this year Eka Patrol briefly surpassed the market capitalization of Brazil's Petrobras, considered the region's benchmark oil producer. The Colombian government still holds an 88.5% stake in the company, with the rest publicly traded. But the company still has wiggle room for a further 8.5% issuance. We are following a model similar to Norway's Statoil, explains Mr. Gutierrez, and it seems to be working. In recent years between 600 and 900 wells have been drilled in the country. But Ecopatrol's recipe for success is partly tied to the development of the majority of those fields, originally tapped between 20 and 30 years ago. Colombia is still relatively virgin in exploration terms, explains Julian Garcia, Gold Oil's country director in Colombia and one of the creators of the N. Attracted by that virginity, recently, Western majors have been particularly drawn to the country's deposits of shale oil and gas, oil sands and coal bed methane, mostly in La Luna, located on the Middle Magdalena Basin. Colombia auctioned off 115 blocks in an auction last month, more than two dozen of which included unconventional shale resources.
Anadarko, ExxonMobil, Royal Dutch Shell were among the winners as the country is pushing to draw investment in shale formations, most of those, in joint ventures with EcoPatrol. In this latest round, part of the major players that have once lost interest in Colombia are back, says Mr. Gutierrez. Aside from shale, this includes agreements for offshore drilling in the Caribbean basin. Not everything in the garden is rosy however. Violence, although not ubiquitous, and mostly in remote border areas with Venezuela and Ecuador, continues to take its toll on pipelines and oil fields. The fighting cuts an estimated 9,000 baud, or 1.2% of Ecopatrol's production. That is almost equivalent to BP's Deepwater Horizon oil spill, according to some analysts' calculations. Notwithstanding, Mr. Gutierrez as well as Colombian officials now say the frequency of the raids declined after representatives of the FARC guerrillas and the Colombian government agreed in August to start peace talks that will last months, not years, according to the country's president, Juan Manuel Santos. Peace would help a lot, on several fronts, says Mr. Gutierrez, as he heads to an investor's presentation, so the future seems to be bright. Source Financial Times